You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan aggravates attempts to facilitate infiltration of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Uncertainty looms over Afghan's future as Taliban continues its hardline stand. And gun-toting Taliban warns of major consequences if not recognized by global powers. The Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is moving fast towards peace and prosperity. People are happier in the region, but someone is envious of this development. This someone is none other than India's hostile neighbour Pakistan, which is consistently making efforts to hamper peace and accord in the valley. Deadly attacks on minorities, migrant workers and even security forces in Jammu and Kashmir in past few weeks have once again exposed Pakistan's nefarious designs, wherein it is attempting to evoke a sense of fear and anxiety among the civilians. A report. October 2021 turned out to be the deadliest month of this year for Jammu and Kashmir, with almost 40 killings that included at least 11 civilians and 12 security personnel. Despite the reiteration of a ceasefire along the line of control in February, the violence increased at multiple fronts, shrouding the valley into fear and insecurity. At least six grenade attacks, recovery of four IDs, hurling of two petrol bombs, and a series of targeted attacks against civilians, including non-local laborers and members of the minority communities added to the worsening situation. The violence has come at a time when Kashmir is beginning to return to a sense of normality. The valley has been witnessing a bumper tourist season this year, with businesses also looking up. As normalcy was returning after abrogation of Article 370 and 35A, uh, it had actually created panic uh, in the handlers of uh, deep state, the ISI across, who were panicky that everything is going normal and uh, stone pelting incidents have come down, the recruitment has come down, the terrorist incidents had come down, many terrorist uh, leadership and ranks were getting killed. So they had uh, they changed their strategy and resorted to civilian killings. As Jammu and Kashmir is heading towards more peace and prosperity, Pakistan, being envious of this development, is busy hatching wily plots to incite terrorism in the region. However, they have just been caught off balance by assertive Indian forces and their nefarious plans have been blown into ashes. In the wake of civilian killings, Indian armed forces launched a massive crackdown across the valley, eliminating 19 terrorists in 14 encounters. They also launched a massive crackdown against the alleged sympathizers of terrorists, summoning, arresting, and detaining hundreds of overground workers associated with lashkar e taiba jaish e muhammad Hezbollah Mujahideen, Al-Badr, and similar other outfits and their affiliates, including the Resistance Front and the people against fascist forces. Meanwhile, the National Investigation Agency of India also pitched in to control the malicious activities of Pakistan-backed terrorists in Kashmir and conducted multiple raids at several locations across Kashmir. As per security officials, the situation is much better now and people of Kashmir want to move towards peace and prosperity. Situation kafi achi hai. Is vakat ham log jo jis mahal ko dekh rahe hain, isme log aman aur shanti chahte hain. Log kisi bhi tarah ke tashadd ke khilaf hain, jahan tashadd ki kuch karvayan hui, jisko logon ne badi large scale ke upar uski majamat ki, usko condemn kiya. 
और अभी का माहौल इस वक्त फिर से बहुत अच्छा है मीन वाइल पाकिस्तान इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी आई एस आई इज कॉन्स्टेंटली कंस्पायरिंग अगेंस्ट इंडिया फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर एंड इज ट्राइंग टू इनफिल्ट्रेट कश्मीर ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल अकॉर्डिंग टू इंटर रिपोर्ट अ मीटिंग बिटवीन सेवरल टेरर ग्रुप्स वॉज कंडक्टेड इन पी ओ के इन विच दे प्लान टू पुश मोर एंड मोर टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर बिफोर द हैवी स्नो फॉल इट वॉज ऑल्सो रिवील दैट आई एस आई हैज बीन प्रोवाइडिंग ऑल लॉजिस्टिक सपोर्ट टू दीज आउटफिट्स and trying to infiltrate them as soon as possible intelligence reports suggest about the presence of 200 to 250 terrorists on the launch pad adjacent to the line of control it's uh, it is a challenge but uh, we have uh, faced this earlier also because in winters after december there is, ha- there is heavy snowfall in the higher reaches of kashmir uh, like gurez karnak keran uh machel uh, all those uh, sectors and uh, it becomes difficult for terrorists to infiltrate so uh, um, uh, they try to push before december so they still have a uh, one more month to go uh, push as many terrorists as possible so that level of violence can be maintained um, and uh, they have many terrorists who have now been freed from uh, afghanistan uh, because they Taliban has taken control of Afghanistan so they want to push those terrorists also to this side but i am sure uh, our uh, army and uh, B, uh, uh, security forces are alert to the challenge and uh, high vigil is being maintained at the border i think we will uh, overcome this challenge Pakistan has always treated Kashmir as a playground for its jihadist terror activities Pakistan backed terror groups through regular infiltration, radicalization of local youth, killing innocent people, and several terror attacks kept the situation tense in the Union territory for several years. However, since the abrogation of Article 370, Indian security forces have managed to foil its all devious agendas and maintain peace in the valley. But Pakistan's unfulfilled dream of annexing Kashmir from India has resuscitated amid Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan and now it is once again making desperate attempts to disturb the tranquility in the region. Let's move to Afghanistan where the Taliban have already begun to wipe out some of the country's gains in 20 years. Until few weeks ago, Islamists were promising the youth a better future. The world assumed this meant a less hardline approach to social issues, particularly women's rights. But everyone knows what happened next. The recent step taken by Taliban portray a messy future of common Afghan people, especially women and children. We take a look. The last time Taliban ruled in the 1990s. They banned women from work and girls from school. They allowed women to leave their homes only when accompanied by a male relative and insisted that women wore all enveloping burqas. This time, the Islamist group are promising greater freedom for women, including in education and employment and in accordance with their interpretation of Islamic law. Yet older girls are still not back at school. There are no women in senior positions in the new government. The women's ministry in Kabul has been shut and the Taliban have said women will only be allowed to work in a small number of jobs. Afghan women living in different parts of the world are demanding their rights. They want their voices to be heard by the global community. These women protesters on the streets of the Indian capital New Delhi are condemning the atrocities on women and children by the Taliban. They are holding play cards which say history will never forget the betrayal and brutality of the Taliban. Actually as you are aware of women in Afghanistan they are in a very bad situation and they are Uh, deprived of all their basic rights right of education right to work they are just deprived of all their rights so we are just uh, standing by again women we are defending their rights the taliban have been in power for several weeks 
but their actions clearly contradict their claims of moderation. The insurgent group violated each of the key promises they made to the international community. But having long nurtured the Taliban as a proxy to exert its influence over Afghanistan, Pakistan continues its efforts to convince the international community of the group's newly found moderation. Downplaying international fears about the egregiousness of Taliban rule, Pakistani leaders have claimed that the Taliban are this time open to sharing power and protecting basic human rights. Therefore, many analysts in and outside Afghanistan believe that Pakistan, by aiding and abetting the Taliban, is directly responsible for the current situation in the country. For most of the Afghans, it is a very painful moment that the ruling dispensation in their homeland is now being controlled by Pakistani forces. And obviously this is not a, an easy situation. And losing Afghanistan, particularly to Pakistan, uh, that's a kick in the gut. Mm. Uh, and it is literally losing it to Pakistan. I mean, no one can tell you anything, but um, the Taliban, particularly the Haqqani network, is, as this uh, former chief of uh, staff of the US Army, had said, the veritable arm of mm. the Pakistani army. So, um, in that sense, uh, it hurts, and it also, it also hurts how people suffer. I don't know if you know, a couple of days, eight children died of hunger mm. in Kabul. The Taliban capture of Afghanistan has created a humanitarian catastrophe, and Pakistan seems to be happy with that. Pakistan has spent decades setting fires in South Asia, and then expected praise and remuneration for offering to put them out. It has a long tradition of playing international powers. Hence, when Pakistan is now openly endorsing the Taliban, the world finally needs to impose sanctions on it. On one hand, Taliban is denying basic rights to women, breaking all its promises, and on the other hand, the Islamist group is desperate to get recognition from international community. No country has formally recognized the Taliban government since the insurgents took over the country in August. Recently, the Taliban warned that failure to recognize their government could have global effects. A report. It's another afternoon and wrestlers kick up dust in a Kabul field known as Jaman e Hazuri to demonstrate grappling skills. Dozens of men and some Taliban members are sitting in large circle, serving as the wrestling ring to watch action after Friday prayers. For the Taliban, if wrestling is going well, everything is all right. For these radical Islamists, wrestling match is more important than lives of poor Afghan people who are now selling their children to survive. The insurgent group has broken all its promises and now the leaders of the so-called Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan are desperate to get recognition from the international community. The Taliban recently called on Washington and other capitals to recognize their government in Afghanistan, warning that a failure to do so would lead to problems not only for the country but for the whole world. رسمیت شناختن افغانستان نیازمندی دو جانبه است تنها افغانستان به رسمیت ضرورت نداره کشورها هم ضرورت بدی داره که ما را به رسمیت باید بشناسن چون اگر آنها میخواین از ما که امنیت تامین باشه و کشورهای جنازیج تعدید نباشه و مسائل دیگر باید ما را من حیث یک جهت مسئول به رسمیت بدانن و بشناسن بعد ما وظیفه خدا ایفا بکنیم و مکلفیت هایی که ما داریم در قبال کشورها او را به جا بیاریم not only on the issue of human rights, but when it comes to the topic of terrorism also, the Taliban government has failed. The Taliban had promised that it would not allow terrorist groups to use Afghan soil for their activities. But evidence shows that different terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda, are now finding Afghan territory as a safe haven. Against the backdrop of a spike in activities of terror groups in Afghanistan, India and the US have jointly called on the Taliban to ensure that Afghanistan is not used again to threaten or attack any country. 
for most of the countries right now. The topic of recognition of the Taliban government is not on the table. When the Taliban is seeking international recognition, common people in the country are openly opposing the government. Those who are not taking part in mass demonstrations against the government are also expressing their dissatisfaction in front of the camera. The Amarat Paratlu Sarako Awal Munta hates the Sipadlun Postergonakari, Ukat Lutir Nizam Hagasich Munta Patidi, no Hamagana Duisti Fadakawi, Dwik, Pola Shaksan, his come to Pirna de Raust, only Manguino. لا هغه توپیرونه راوستي چې ملت په خوخ نه دی لکه زمونږ ملي بیرغ لري کړه زمونږ اردو رنګه شوې ده سیده یو تحول او غټ تحول او افغانانو باندې راغه نو من هیڅ د توپیر نه لرو چې هغه مثبتي ریکگنیشن برینګز گورنمنټس ا لوټ اف انټرنیشنل لیګل بینیفیټس دات انکلودز ډیپلوماټیک ایمونیټیز فور ایگزامپل Taliban leader including those who are on UNSC's terrorism blacklist will be allowed to travel outside the country without the risk of getting arrested if the world recognizes the Taliban the Islamist group can eventually get access to Afghanistan's assets in the United States until there is clarity on the recognition of Taliban common Afghans are caught in the middle of the debate Let's move to Pakistan's Balochistan province which generally remains hidden from the eyes of the world has been suffering from a serious humanitarian crisis for over 7 decades ethnic communities living in the region have been facing arbitrary detentions and forced disappearances and killings by the state and non-state actors over the years the people residing in these territories are being murdered by pakistani security forces and terrorists to suppress their voices of freedom most of these cases go unnoticed since the cold blooded pakistan government does not allow any media or rights organization to visit and investigate the actual situation we take a look over the years pakistan backed terrorism has risen sharply in its resource rich balochistan province The region which locals claim was occupied by Pakistan in 1948 has been struggling for their rights and freedom. As part of its counter liberation strategy, Pakistani forces have been violating human rights and committing war crimes in the region by killing the civilians and extrajudicially arresting the activists and intellectuals. The people of Balochistan, a large number of whom have migrated to Europe, have been telling the international community about their sufferings but the world remains silent the baloch are often charged with treason and branded as terrorist on the other hand the actual terrorist who are trained by the pakistani army get a state guest treatment these terrorists have been given a free hand to perpetrate barbarities on baloch people in balochistan you you will find worse kind of subjugation worse kind of colonization you cannot imagine how pakistan army is brutally killing abducting and keeping the people under subjugation so there's not a one uh, area one field where you can say that the, these are being treated as human beings on one side we see there are military operations where the pakistani army forces they cordon off an area and they then they start their military operation with helicopter guns with uh, killing the people extrajudicially and looting the resources of the houses and eliminating the people uh, all that uh, that is being done uh, uh, on a routine basis on the second side we see that the people are being uh, victim of enforced disappearances it seems like the whole world has turned a blind eye over the issue of balochistan pakistan army and its proxies are even targeting the baloch children and women On September 21, Taj Bibi was killed allegedly by the Frontier Corps in Durbat. A bullet hit her forehead inside the car she was traveling in before she could even introduce herself at the check post. In October this year, a 10-year-old boy Ramiz Khalil was shot dead during a police raid at his home in the early hours while his younger brother got injured. 
Later in the same month, Frontier Corps Balochistan killed two Baloch miners and injured another by firing mortar shots in the Hoshab area of Turbat, Balochistan. These incidents shocked Balochistan. Baloch activists, student organizations, human rights groups called the incidents inhuman and barbaric and examples of extreme aggression and hatred against Baloch nation. We are here to the Pakistan. They are killing now our innocent children. Even in the Balochistan, they have not drinking water, not street, not road, not schools, but they have copper, gold, mineral resources. They are kids dying. The women are dying. Hepatitis, TB. They, they the child, but they have no one maternity home over there. This is total injustice. This is total injustice. And and other end, we see the world blind. Recently, the Baloch National Movement organized a series of protests in the major cities of the world, including Netherlands, South Korea and Germany. Disgruntled activists not only accused Pakistan of war crimes and violating the human rights of Baloch people, but also exposed the administration's barbarity on Hindu minority living in Pakistan. They revealed that Hindu girls in Pakistan are being kidnapped and compelled to convert their religion by forcibly getting married to Muslim men. They kill Hindu girls, they brutally torture and uh, they convert religion. You are Hindu, now you become a Muslim. This is a one uh, sham in one society. Why one Hindu girl become a Muslim? Why? Total injustice. Baluchistan has the most mineral deposits among the provinces of Pakistan. The Baloch stare at a bleak future, looking on helplessly as the Chinese take control of their mineral rich land under the pretext of China Pakistan Economic Corridor, Sipi, fortifying and fencing areas like the port city of Gwadar. China is not only violating human rights in its occupied territory but has collaborated with Pakistan to exploit natural resources in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Gilgit-Baltistan and Balochistan. China has been defending and often covering up for Pakistan's links to banned terror groups. It has stood by Pakistan in the UNSC and other multilateral forums on this issue. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savijay signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>